Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, actually, the good thing is whenever I see this slide, I remember my name. <laughs> and you can too. Uh, uh, allow me to uh, welcome you on behalf of the board and the staff and volunteers of the National Museum of Women in the Arts uh, to our, Milani, our second Fresh Talk this season, uh, featuring rooms of her own, women, art, and, the, and ownership in the hotel industry. And I am happy to say that this uh, Fresh Talk came about uh, based on a conversation in a rather gritty coffee house in New York City downtown uh, uh, but among uh, Zita Cobb, who's here with us uh, this evening from uh, Canada, and uh, Katie DeBost, who was then the head of our Paris committee, now recently moved back to Toronto, and Eileen Gutman, our head of national and international uh, uh, outreach. And what we were talking about was Zita's conversation that she had at the uh, 92nd Street Y uh, the night before that was all about uh, what she had been able to accomplish uh, at Fogo Island, which you'll hear about uh, this evening. And so the light bulb went on, thank goodness, the light bulb does go on occasionally. And uh, this idea of what about women and as hoteliers, what does it mean to think differently about the experience of um, uh, using uh, hospitality or the art of hospitality to uh, inspire uh, new sorts of thinking in the world. And so when we were able to um, uh, entice Monique Greenwood and also uh, Sheldon uh, Scott to be with us uh, this evening, we thought that we could have a really terrific conversation about how the industry is, sh is changing and what it means to use hospitality uh, in ways that inspire people uh, either to action, uh, to greater community engagement, and also to uh, cre even greater creativity. So uh, Milani will tell you more about our speakers and also thank many other people. But I did want to uh, remind everybody that um, this uh, program for Women, Arts, and Social Change is really made possible uh, through leadership gifts from uh, Denise Little. Field Sobel, the Dore Davis Family Fund, the Susan and Jim Swartz Public Programs Fund here at the museum. We also have additional funding from the Bernstein Family Foundation, which is a local foundation, the Ravada Foundation of the Logan Family, also local, and then uh, Stephanie Sale, who is one of our board members and very passionate about the Women in Ar Arts and Social Change programming. And then, of course, I want to uh, thank Katie DeBose again uh, for uh, introducing us to uh, Zita Cobb, which really has made this entire uh, presentation possible. And now I'll turn the podium over to Milani Douglas, our great public programs head. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Hi. <laughs> well, welcome. Um, thank you all for joining us. Uh, I'm Ilani Douglas, Director of Public Programs, as Susan said. And how many people is this your first time coming to, one, the museum? Is this your first time coming to the museum? Okay, good. All right. How many first time coming to a fresh talk? Wow. Okay. All right. And how many people have been here before to a fresh talk? All right, so you guys get to show them the ropes, right? Okay, so um, we this platform was started as a way to bring together people who are champions of women and to have conversations between art and social change. Um, we've served over, had 30 partnering organizations, over 60 outstanding presenters, and over 7,500 people come and join us for these conversations. So there is an African proverb that says that if you wanna go fast, go alone, if you want to go far, go together. And um, this could not be done. We have a small and mighty team. Um, our, our program manager is Amanda Veracruz. She's here. If you, Amanda, I've got to have you stand up. So Amanda. 
And this is her first season with us. She came um, in February, hit the ground running, um, doing a fabulous job. I packed a lot of programs this year. And so, so at the beginning, I was like, let's just see how we all do. Bam, 20 programs, let's do it. So, and so we have been doing that together very well. We also have Grace DeWitt. I'm not sure if she's in here. Grace in the back, yes. She is our public programs fellow, um, our first public programs fellow. And, um, and we also have, where is Beth? Beth is probably managing the stages, which is what she does. So she's making sure that all of it happens while we're able to be in here. Um, we have an amazing team of uh, vendors that also work with us as well. And I want to make sure also to give a special thank you to Adriana Regalado. If you have not been to our museum shop, this program started, um, it was built on the success of the Maker Mart. She said that, the, uh, that there were participants in the Maker Mart and what can we do more to highlight them. We decided to find ways to bring them to the stage, but then also tomorrow we have a series of workshops for business owners that we have negotiation skills, we have social media 101 and then how how to move your social media account to branding. Um, and then we also have how to run a lean and mean business by Deanna Dorsey. So we wanted to create a platform that we could be, that we could serve them and give them what they needed. We put it on a Monday because most business owners in this area, Monday is the day that they're usually taking off. So we wanted to consider that as well. Um, we also want to thank the Donahoe Hospitality Services. Thomas Penny is here. Um, they provided a bus for Morgan State students to be here. Are we Morgan State? Where are we? Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Good. Um, and so they were very supportive and made a quick, I, the phone call was made, they immediately got to it. I have never seen a bus appear that fast in my life. <laughs> So I was so grateful for that. Um, and then also our generous community partner, the Eaton Workshop, they have provided the space for our workshop tomorrow. They have been wonderful as far as accommodating our guests. Um, our guests have had a chance to experience them and you'll hear from Sheldon Scott um, from them tonight as well. So just a little bit of housekeeping. Um, if you could take out your cell phones and have a look at it and make sure it's either on air or, or whatever it needs to be so that it's not ringing. Uh, you can write notes in your cell phone or use the notes in your program. And if you do social media, please do hashtag fresh talk the number four and then change. We do look at all of that and we put it together in our wonderful reports so that we can let our donors and people support us and our members know that we are giving you what you want. Speaking of members, are there any members here? Oh, okay, that's, a, that's enough, but we could do a little bit more. If you have not found out about being a member at the National Museum of Women in the Arts, you would be surprised at, one, what it costs to be a member, and then also with how the membership opens you up to other museums as well. Um, so take a look at it, and, and join us on the side of membership. It's, it's pretty fun. You might, wanna, you might wanna do that. So first, I wanna tell you how the evening's gonna go. We're going to have our, well, Thomas Penny's gonna give us a state of the industry, give us some facts about the industry, um, about women in the hospitality industry. Then we're going to have our presenters give you some information about their background, what they were bringing to arts and hospitality. Um, and then Sheldon, Scott, and all of our presenters, Monique and Zita, they're going to join um, on stage and have a conversation. And then we'll take a few questions from you. And then afterwards, please join us in the Great Hall for some refreshments um, that we have lovely picked out for you. And so we will move into and having Mr. Thomas Penny give us just a bit about the state of the industry. Uh, thank you so much. So I think it's only appropriate that I start with Go Nets. <laughs> <laughs> so um, just a few things. One, I want to thank Milani Douglas for just doing a phenomenal job of pulling this together. Let's give her a round of applause. My wife, as I was sitting there, she just uh, said to me that she wanted to be a member, so you at least got one. And uh, uh, I'd be remiss if I just didn't acknowledge her. She uh, gives me permission to uh, make myself available on Sunday evening. So uh, Denise, I love you. Thank you for allowing me to come. And then I just want to say, I think it's powerful that on a Sunday evening, we have 
students that traveled from Baltimore City to be here to share in this discussion. Uh, obviously, uh, for those of us who remember co our college days, on the weekends, that was our time. And for them to have traveled 40 or 50 miles to be here, they deserve a hearty round of applause. And so I just want to set the table as I talk about the state of the industry to really just give one quote that really talks about what's possible and talks about the important role that women play. It's by Kavita Ramdas, and she says, quote, we need women who are so strong they can be gentle, so educated they can be humble, so fierce they can be compassionate, so passionate they can be rational, and so disciplined they can be free, end quote. We need, we need women to, uh, to help, I think, guide the course of our industry as well as guide the course of our country. And um, at this time, I'm going to move into first speaking about some of the challenges that remain within our industry, and then I'm going to cover some of the things of which we can all be optimistic about. First, some of the challenges. 75% of the hotels, of the hotel owners, operators, and senior executives in the industry today are men. In DC, about 80% of the hotels, and there's roughly about 130 hotels in DC proper, 80% of the general managers operating hotels in the city today are men. Of the top 10 REITs, all of them are male-led with one exception. 100% of the top five largest hotel brands in the world are led by men. That speaks to some of the challenges that are present within our industry. And collectively, that's why it's important to have students here, because it will be us working with students that will change that and we have to urgently work to change that. And so now, just to some of the things that we should be optimistic about, despite those challenges, there are some women doing phenomenal things, and we're fortunate to have many of them here within this region. One, Sheila Johnson, of course, is operating a world-class facility in the Salamander, and I'm certain many of you have been there to experience it. And uh, this, to me, you know, really defines women being in positions of, of leadership and ownership. My wife and I went there recently, and we were surprised to see her there working, greeting, and, and supporting her team. And uh, it made for a unique experience for us. And so we're proud of what she's been able to accomplish, and she's expanded her footprint beyond just the one facility she has. Another woman doing phenomenal uh, things here in the industry is Leslie Hale. Leslie Hale is the first president and CEO of a major REIT in the, in the, in the country, and she is the uh, president and CEO of, of RLJ. This, was, this is a big job because uh, you know, they own over 100 hotels. And uh, needless to say, um, as much as she is talented and she's been at the forefront of building out that organization, um, everybody was not excited to see her take over. But only through her persistence and preparation, she was able to take over and run that. Erica Alexander, another, which is uh, one of the highest ranking women at Marriott International. Um, Gail Smith Howard, Stacy Smith, Sherry Swain, and Deidre Davis all run hotels in this city. And uh, as a matter of fact, Sherry Swain, a former Army vet, is the chair of the board of the Hotel Association. She's only the second woman to ever chair the board of the Hotel Association here in DC. And she, is, she represents the voice of our industry uh, for all the hotels in the city. And then just lastly, I wanna just say, at Donahoe, we're fortunate to have a different trend of all of our hotels in, in DC, as well as our senior leadership team. 70% are, are, uh, are led by women. 70% of the senior executives at our corporate office are women. And of that 70%, 50% are women of color. And then um, in our hotels, 70% today are, are women. And of that 70%, roughly about 55% are women of color. And so I think women offer a unique 
perspective that is right for this moment. And I don't think as a, as a man who's been in this business for a long time, I personally have all the skills necessary to, to really make the right decisions and, and, and the women within our organization form that balance. I'm just gonna leave you with one project that I'm excited about. It's not mine, but I'm watching it very closely. There is a hotel in the city right now that is being mm -hmm. um, designed around women empowerment. And uh, I can't, I, someone told me about it off the record, but all of the art in the building will reflect the spirit of, of women empowerment. There was a man that was operating the hotel, and as this concept was coming together, uh, the, man, the male general manager was exited and replaced with a woman such that the experience is carried through. The industry is going in the direction of these authentic experiences that speak to one's values. And so I think that this hotel that's coming to the downtown core will transform the industry because I think, I think women and men are yearning to go somewhere and have it to speak to their soul. And so again, I'm delighted to, uh, to at least have had the opportunity to spend a few moments with you. Um, and, and I look forward to being a part of future conversations. Thanks for the opportunity.